knockoff toys should you buy them? Roll that intro. It's Morphin Time! Well guys, welcome to a brand new episode and I think I've got a pretty cool one for you. One thing I do tend to buy a few of is knockoff toys from the likes of AliExpress or Wish, even eBay, just because you know they're they're a ton cheaper than than the OGs and the actual authentic kind of pieces and I get why there is kind of knockoffs out there. But should you buy them? That is what we're going to be looking into today. This has been a mental week for a number of reasons. Well, here in the UK, we're now in phase one of the coronavirus thing. So, I mean, things are opening up. Things are getting slightly better. Um, fingers crossed next week we can open up our bubble and be able to actually see parents, uh, see grandparents, see friends, families, you know, every, everything. So everything's getting slightly better, but we are not out of the woods yet. On another note, PlayStation 5, wow! That router looks awesome. I actually really like it. Um, I like the design and some of the games that were coming out are just super cool. Horizon, that is what I'm looking at. Horizon Zero Dawn was my game. I love that two pieces. What we can do today is we will compare a few Unfortunately, I don't have two of the same, like the authentic and the knockoff at the same time, but hopefully I'll be able to compare a few similar figures to show the differences between the two. So you guys can decide for yourselves whether buying knockoff toys is for you. Now there is some really good ones, there is some extreme, and I mean extremely bad ones, which I am going to show you in just a minute. But check out some of this B-roll that I filmed earlier. This will show you a few of the knockoffs, but I have thrown some authentic toys in there to see if you can spot which ones are the fakes. Let's roll that. So were you able to spot any of the fakes? I think you probably did. Especially by the end, there was a quick giveaway as to who is definitely a fake. Starting with a couple of my favorite knockoffs. And let's see what you guys think. So the main ones for me that are extremely good are the knockoff Figma Sword Art Online figures. Now these are, there, there's a couple of issues with them, but if you pose them correctly, you don't properly notice the kind of the kind of bad parts of them. So starting with Asuna, everything is pretty good. Kind of strong joints. Um, nothing kind of just falls off when you're trying to like do some pretty cool poses. I think maybe the hands are a little bit on the loose side but everything else is just really strong like i don't know if the actual figma figures are better at kind of sealing like, the the head part so you you know you can pull out the top of asuna's hair so you can swap the face out for a for a cuter version or for an angrier version but all in all this figure is extremely strong everything 
I mean, certain parts can fall off at times, like maybe our the back of our dress. But all in all, you just need, sometimes don't even need the stand to keep her standing. But really good for some poses and a really strong figure to photograph as well. Really enjoying being able to get really good poses with her. So, I mean, for me, this is one of my favourites. It's just such a strong knockoff. What we could actually have a look at is the box that she came in with. I'm not going to let you have a look at every single box because this video would be like 55 minutes long if we do that. But box has a lot of telltale signs as to what's wrong with it. It just looks really, it actually looks really good on the camera. Um, it doesn't look, but the color is like really washed and kind of blurred. The images just aren't that crisp. If you had this box, you would know it's fake. 100% you would know it's fake. A huge telltale sign that it's a knockoff. And the other Figma boxes, they sort of follow the exact same, same pattern, that they're all quite washed out colored, but it's, it's still a nice touch that you're getting the same box. Everything's presented in the exact same way as you would buy a normal Figma figure. They are a bit washed out, just like the Metal Gear Solid. Like the, the best thing about the Snake Metal Gear Solid figure, the knockoff, is the box. The box is the best part of it, which is pretty crap because the figure should, it should be better. But it just isn't. These toys are around, what, 60 pounds right now to like, Around like a hundred for some premium figures like these, and these ones, the knockoffs are like from ten pounds to like twenty pounds. So you can see a huge difference in price. And I do think you get, especially the Sword Art Online, the Sword Art Online figures like Kirito here is just an amazing figure. His neck's too long. That's the only gripe I have with this figure, but if you point his head a little bit down, it's it's perfect. And most of the poses that you can get him in are, are just unreal. So I am so happy with all of, like you're seeing on here, just uh, an outstanding, just really cool looking, looking figure. And they do all have kind of pain issues. They're not the best painted, but it's like a project that you could do as well. I mean, if, if you're comfy painting some of your figures, give it a little custom job, then what's like 15 pounds? That's like the price of some kind of normal figures. Like right now you can get the Cycle Blue for 15 pounds in the Lightning Collection, which is a completely official figure, and these aren't. But these do their job as a knockoff. And I mean, if you've got these displayed, some people are not going to notice that these are knockoffs. Unless you've got them down and kind of trying to, an arm falls off or something like that. We are going to get to some extremely bad ones in three, two, one. I'm going to tell you just now, from the B-roll, let me know if you were able to tell which ones are there, where the KOs and the original. Because I'm going to tell you a couple of original ones right now. Actual, complete authentic. So this is SH Figure Arts. Sailor Moon. It's uh, it, it's just really nice. It's a nice toy. The thing with the Sailor Moon ones, even, like, see how hard it was to take her arm off there. That that was pretty hard to get that kind of joint off. But she does fall apart at certain points. Not a big deal because everything, like, look at that. But everything clicks back into place. Everything's painted really well. I've had this one for a while, so this has a lot of scuffs. All around, it's a really fun figure to use. Now. I bought Sailor Saturn. Now this is a completely different issue and it, it's so flimsy. Legs fall off. I put super glue, I put super glue pretty much everywhere just so I can get her into a certain pose and that is it. Like it's not a toy that, that can be used for anything. It's a complete mess. Like she can't really hold her, her staff. Our arms, if I hadn't put super glue pretty much everywhere, like our hands would come off. All of the actual replacement hands that she got doesn't fit the pegs, so they all just slide off. It's not strong enough for her to, well there's her leg gone again. It's not strong enough for her to like actually keep her staff up, unless you put it all the way to the top. But say you wanted to pose it slightly down a bit, it's just a mess. 
Loads of it is partly unpainted, like her gloves should be a solid white all the way from the, from the bottom to the top. She has the joint the pegs are actually just normal skin colour and even at her feet as well, so where she's got her ankle, I don't know why they didn't paint it. And again, this was £11. £11, do I feel like I got my money's worth out of it? As a static statue type figure, yes, it looks good when you've been able to get her into the pose of your choice. As a figure for toy photography, no. This would drive you insane having to pose her for anything. Like this is just, it's just, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <gasps> uh oh. <laughs> oh well, it couldn't have, this could have happened better. So, our, our hand is actually fully broken now. The peg is stuck in there and her hand has fallen off. It's completely snapped and that wasn't... Okay, 11 pounds, this one is not worth it at all. But you could see the sort of differences. Her joints are painted well and this looks like she has... You know, her boot doesn't cut off there and then continues up after there's a wee cut in her boots. Her, her wrist joint is actually white so it ties with her gloves. What else? Like ch changing the face on this one as well was really, it's actually not too bad, but everything just kind of falls out really easy. It's a pain to get the other accessories on. With this one, you don't have that issue. Everything is actually, everything is actually perfect with this one. But I've had it for so long that I didn't care about it for a while. So it was put in a box, it's got all these scuffs, but I'm not too fussed about it. SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z, you have the likes of Piccolo, Trunks, Vegeta, Goku, all at extreme prices. I mean, these are now retailing at like around 50 to 60 pounds as soon as they come out, which is like not too bad. I, I still struggle to pay close to that just yet. I mean, I really want these figures, but I just, there's not much I can, I can't justify buying them. But once they're out of circulation, that is when the prices skyrocket. Now, Dragon Ball Z is a, one of the most famous animes out there. I mean, I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. I have a few Dragon Ball tattoos, just, you know, just to, stamp that I am a huge fan and I have the tattoos to prove it. Do you have a Dragon Ball Z tattoo? I don't think so. You're not a real fan. You are a real fan. I'm only joking. You don't know. I digress. Right, so. Uh, Goku Black. One of the coolest villains in Dragon Ball Super. In my opinion, I really, really liked the whole Goku Black saga. Thought it was really cool. Me and my son sat down to watch Dragon Ball Super. He got fully into it and he wanted a Goku Black figure for Christmas. Now, this is where I thought a knockoff toy would be great because he could slam it about, he can destroy it, he can do whatever he wants with it because nobody, we don't care about it. It's, it's fine, it's a knockoff. It's not the, the 60 pound figure that if I saw him throw it about, it'd be like, ah! It's not that. So let's open this together. Now it has been opened. But this is kind of what you get when you're getting a knockoff figure. So the box is actually really nice. Um, it's got the same sort of thing with Figma where it's just super saturated and you can tell it's not official figure arts packaging, but it does quite well. So slide and Goku Black out. Everything looks fairly good so far. Everything looks cool. Everything, so far so good, everything's good. Now, let's take off the panel, keeping Goku black in. Oh, already the first thing is his fist has fallen off. But can you see that? That's without really doing anything. His joints are just so loose. It's probably the loosest joints on a figure I've ever came across for a, even a, a knockoff like that. It actually was quite similar to um, Snake. His joints are all like really loose, but nowhere near as bad as nowhere near as bad as Goku Black. The thing with um, oh, the thing with Snake as well is 
There's nothing keeping his upper body attached to his lower body. The peg, they must have forgot to install, <laughs> which I thought was quite funny. And I paid actually like 18 pounds for this and I really wanted to send it back. But I'm really bad when it comes to that. I just can't be bothered with me posting something back and I can't be bothered getting into the fight with the seller. My son got this for Christmas. I really wish I'd opened it beforehand because if I had, I would never have given him this atrocity. But you can see, everything is super loose. Now, the first thing he wanted to do was put him in a cool pose, so let's get him flying. Oh, his leg fell off. That is the first thing that happened. He wanted him to be Super Saiyan Rosé. So really, all you need to do with that is you disconnect his head, you can... Oh, well that came off rather easy. The reason it comes off rather easy is because the holes are on his original head. It's too big for the peg, but the hole on the Super Saiyan Rosé is actually too small. So you have to... You have to kind of force his little joint in and it very rarely works. Right, okay, that's it. Sort of, it, it's not in. That's the best we're gonna get it. So let's put his face back on and we'll might as well just pop his leg back in. So everything does go back in. And I mean the figure actually looks not too not too bad. I mean it's if you could get this in a decent pose, you could use it as a, a sort of statue. It's not the worst, but it is in no way the best. But it's just super, super loose. I mean, if you wanted them in the Kamehameha kind of pose, it's it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare. And look at that, look how easy his head popped off after how you saw me try and put that in. And putting that against an actual official figure arts, like, I mean, look at that. Joints are pretty tight. Everything just, I mean, that is a quality figure art. So the conclusion, should you buy knockoff toys? The answer is yes, but it's also no. It's extreme trial and error, and you are going to get a cheaper figure. That is the plus side. And if you get one that is, if you get one that you're pleasantly surprised with, then that is the icing on the cake because, like, the, like I say, the Sword Art Online figures are outstanding. They're just really good. They all pose perfectly. And I'll probably continue buying the knockoff Figma Sword Art Online figures because if I don't need to buy the official ones for their extremely high prices, then the knockoff ones are there for what I need. And if you guys know me, which if you head over to my Instagram, you'll see that I don't treat the toys all that well. I chuck them into flour, I will blow some of them up. I burnt Gogeta at one point because pointed a sprinkler candle at them. My fault, but I did that. These knockoffs are perfect for putting them into those extreme situations. Now, if I had the original figures that cost me like 60 to 100 pounds per figure, I would not be doing that with them. That is why I like the Lightning Collection so much. At 20 pounds, it's, it's fine for me to just chuck them into flour, give them a little wash, and then if their joints seize up or whatever, I'm not too bothered about them. Now, so for me, I love knockoff toys, but I get really disappointed on some of them. So it's not something that, it's it's complete trial and error. If you find any, if, if you have any stories about knockoff toys or any brands that you have found amazing ones, drop a message below. I would love to hear what ones you've bought and how they have helped you in your photography or whether they've just been a figure to display because you love that character. Let me know, let me know. And also, let me know what the worst knockoff figures you've had because that is also an interesting story like you've seen I have a few bad ones but some really cool ones they're all Figma Sword Art Online knockoffs that I have but they're probably my favorite knockoffs and they're not expensive like 10 12 pounds per one free shipping from China to me it was a no-brainer but guys thank you so much for watching this video if you like this one drop a like if you have any questions you know where to ask, drop a comment below. 
and please subscribe to this channel. I'm over 200 subscribers now, which I never thought I would ever get to. It actually blows my mind that some of you guys actually love what I'm doing, and I hope you guys enjoy each video after video after video, because I enjoy making these. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please sub, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Oh, actually, I have one more thing, one more thing to add to the end of this one. Scotty's Water Photo Challenge. You guys have smashed it. I am so happy at the how many people took part in it. I'm so happy that I got you guys creating these amazing, oh, some of them are just outstanding. The amount of people that have actually contributed to this challenge. I actually got really nervous on day one because I thought nobody was interested. But you guys have blown me away with the reception on week one. Um, week two, we're going to get a little bit more... I'm going to try and make it more thoughtful rather than just like an element or like, a, like water and things like that. I'm going to try and do a sort of like feeling or something like that. I don't know. But we're currently on Saturday right now. You'll be watching this on Sunday. Thank you so much for watching, drop a like on this video, leave me a comment if you want to chat, I will get back to you as soon as I can, and please sub, it helps me out greatly, and I'm going to stop rambling, goodbye!